Hi guys! The last few weeks I've been receiving lots of messages on my Instagram account from people that have watched my videos and want to know some more about my printing process. So this week I thought that I would share some more details with you. Let's jump in. Lots of you know that I have a Canon IP8750 that I brought about a year ago and unfortunately I've had nothing but problems with it. I get lots of questions as to whether or not I recommend this printer and the honest truth is no, I really don't. Um, I have an Epson 1500W which I have had since 2013 and in my opinion the quality of the colour and the depth of the colour is far far superior to the Canon even though it is quite an old printer. The only reason I had to upgrade was that I had problems with the paper feeding tray and also now that it's getting so old it's also having issues with uh, lines, faint lines appearing in the print no matter how many head alignment and um, printer cleaning cycles that I do. This is a bit of a problem with Epson. If you will have a look through lots of reviews, there will be people that say the same. So it's a catch-22. Yes, the print quality is better, but there are a few issues with it. Whereas the Canon, when I can get it to work, I have no issues whatsoever with the head alignment or with any of these faint lines whatsoever. One of the questions that I'm getting most often is what card do I print with, especially for greetings cards. This is my preferred printing media. Excuse the terrible crumbled packaging. It is the ICE 320 GSM double-sided matte card. It prints perfectly, the drying time is minimal and it's a good thickness especially for greetings cards. However, nobody seems to be able to get hold of it at the moment. All of my usual stockists are sold out and there are rumours flying around that I have decided to discontinue this. Which is obviously a bit of a blow considering I have spent possibly hundreds of pounds testing out different card media, checking out uh, blanks specifically for photography cards, which are mega expensive. And this was definitely the best in terms of price, print quality, and just ease of use. So it's meant that I've had to look for an alternative. Coming a fairly close second is Paper Cuts, and it's a double-sided matte card again, but this time it's only 300 GSM. So it's slightly thinner, it's not really noticeable. To be honest, the print quality is just as good as the ice, it's just a bit more expensive. If we have a look at the breakdowns, the price for the paper cuts, if you're buying 50 sheets at a time, comes in at 18p a sheet, and the Ice Duo Matte comes in at only 15p a sheet when you're buying 50 sheets at a time. So I know it's only pennies, but obviously you have to factor in that you will be making mistakes. Sometimes print issues mean that you have to completely bin cards. So it's best to try and keep costs as low as you can. And in my opinion, that 3p for the paper cuts Obviously I have no other alternative at the moment, but I just don't think it's worth it. The Ice Duo Matte was definitely better in my opinion. So how do you go from an A4 size to a 5x7 card or whatever card size that you're using? The easiest way to do that is by creating a card blank before you actually print them. There's two ways to do it. You can either use the card material that we've just discussed or if you want to make life a bit quicker and easier, then you can purchase pre-made and scored card blanks. Last year, some of you may have seen my video where I kind of experimented with the Pinnacle brand and I purchased these. These are only 300 GSM, which means that they are exactly the same thickness as the paper cuts that I'm using now. However, although obviously it's usually done on weight, personally, I feel that the paper cuts seems more sturdy and a little bit thicker in the hand than the expensive blanks. You also have to take into account cost because although these print slightly better, they've just got richer colours, these work out at about £1 each, whereas these are obviously only 18p each. So that is a big, big jump, especially when you factor in all the wastage that may occur. I prefer to make my own card blanks and it's fairly simple. I'll show you how. I use a super basic card trimmer to make my blanks. Um, this is just one that I got from Amazon. I will pop a link down below. 
So because I know that I want my finished card size to be five by seven inches, I know that I need it to be seven inches tall and then 10 inches wide to account for me obviously trimming it down and printing on it and then folding it. So I just find the 10 inches on here and line it all up. These aren't the sturdiest things. Ironically, I did used to have a better guillotine and I gave it away because I didn't use it that much. That was when I used to make paper cut cards rather than printed ones. So I've just gone up for 10 inches that way. And now I need to make sure that the height is going to be seven inches. So because this moves, I always make sure that I don't use it um, butted right up to the edge because it doesn't give me a straight line. I end up slightly wonky. So I use this bit here, which does give me, this bit here just does give me a straight line just to make sure it's all up there. And then just pull this out slightly to make sure it's at seven inches. And there we go. So now we have a five by seven inches piece of card. For my design work, I use a program called Affinity Designer. It is quite similar to Adobe Illustrator and obviously Photoshop, but it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> There's no rolling subscription. I think I paid £40 for it. They often have promotional offers and there was at one time a special offer where you could download it for 30 days just to try it out. I will drop the link below. I would definitely recommend it. It can be a bit tricky to get to grips with, but there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube, which is exactly what I used. So to start with, all of my greetings cards that are to be printed, I have a template set up that is 10 inches by 7 inches, and then I have everything laid out so that when it prints, I can just use the blanks that I've just cut. Before I print, I always look at my document properties, and that's to make sure that obviously the size is correct for the media that I'm printing on and that the colours are correct too. I have given a video before about the different ICC profiles that I have to use for my printer. Unfortunately I can't advise you as they all seem to be a bit different. Then I go to the actual print settings and make sure that I have selected the correct printer. As you can see I've got quite a few. Then I'll go in and I have a preset for my um, card blanks and that is obviously here. You can see all of the different settings that I use. Each printer is going to be a bit different. Unfortunately, the best thing to do is just have a play around. And then I need to manually change the size to custom, then make sure it's on inches and select seven inches wide by 10 inches high, and then okay that. That will take me back to the affinity settings and I'll need to manually change that again, just to make sure everything matches up. Once I'm ready to print, it's just a case of using my blank that I've just trimmed down, popping it into the feeder, making sure that the little paper feeders are in the right place so that it's gripped firmly, and then just pressing print. Now, I'm not going to lie, at the moment, there's been a few times when this is struggling to pick up the card. Most printers don't like printing anything over 300 and it's had almost a year of me printing 320 GSM. So it means that it occasionally needs a bit of coaxing to get it to take the printer paper, but once it does, it's absolutely fine. So you'll see it's now struggling. I'm gonna get an orange light here to tell me that it's struggling. So it now just means a bit of faffing around trying to get it to take it. Now you just saw that that took quite a bit of faffing for me to actually get the printer to accept the card. I'm not going to lie, I'm slightly nervous because of this is exactly how it started out with my Epson up here that um, after continued use of me trying to get it to use the thicker paper media, that's when the printer rollers really started to have an issue. There is a workaround. It usually means that the rollers just need to have a little bit of a clean and I use some isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of all of the dust that accumulates, especially when I'm trimming down and making my own card blanks. It means that 
the microscopic particles from the card are just getting stuck to the rollers making it a bit more difficult to kind of grip anything so i'm hoping that it's just a simple fix like that and that it's not going to end up with the rollers completely broken so fingers crossed So as you can see, now that it's printed out, you've got the outer design and the back all on one. So we need to make it into a card. If I was just to fold that, it's gonna look messy. Um, you're gonna get cracking on the spine. So you need to use something that I never believed was actually going to make much of a difference to my cards, but my goodness, it does. I put off buying one of these for about three years because it was £25 for what I thought was just a bit of moulded plastic. But it's what takes your cards from looking like a homemade folded bit of paper to looking like a professional finish. This <laughs> very interesting looking board here is actually a card creaser. So it comes with a paper boner fabulous name and as you can see there's all sorts of grooves um, with different markings at the top so I will show you how to use this. Because this one is in centimetres and it's actually supposed to be also used for making envelopes, something I've not used it for, um, it's a little bit tricky to get the standard 5 by 7 measurements on it. So if you can see this nice little bit of washi tape here it's because I know that if I line the edge of the card, the up left, top left edge there with that, then I need to go to where the star is here, pop the card boner in, and literally just pull it down once, back up again, and down again. I'm having to do this at an angle to accommodate the camera so um, I promise you it's usually a lot smoother than that but if you flip it over hopefully I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up but you should be able to see um, this kind of crease here and obviously on the back as well it means that when you come to fold it I like to flip mine like that and then I'll try and line up the corners. And then use your card creaser to come down like that. And that way as well. And again to the edges. You have a pretty good fold there. There's no cracking. And on the inside as well, it looks perfect. Before I invested in one of these, I just used to use a ruler and score ever so lightly with a um, scalpel. It wasn't the greatest because it meant that occasionally the spine would start to splay a little bit on the fold here where I just kind of gone a little bit too deep in so it didn't have the neatest finish and when I realised how much of a difference using the card boner and the paper creaser actually made I was blown away so I'll drop a link down below I know that it seems like just such a expensive cost for something so simple but believe me it does make all the difference so if you are an owner of a beefy printer that has like five or six different inks in it you'll know that the running costs are extremely expensive this is why I don't use the official printer inks. Um, the last time I checked to get a full set for the Canon, it was £90. And that would potentially last me a couple of months. But if I'm doing a lot of greetings cards, it's going to last me a month. So when you're factoring in how much ink you're getting through, um, it's just not worth it. It would actually work out cheaper to get your cards proficiently printed rather than having to do them in house so i use the ink squid i'm going to drop their link down below i've been using them for about seven or eight years now i started with my epson printer and i was overjoyed when i learned that they also do compatibles for my canon because the printer ink is fantastic as you can see from here it's all quite nice and deep um 
the only thing that I would say is if you are planning to use your printer for creating prints then I would definitely stick to the compatibles that is because after a while the ink colours start to fade now this has been up in full sunlight in my workroom for about eight months now so obviously that's quite a while the average shelf life of a greetings card being out is maybe one or two weeks so it's absolutely fine but if somebody's purchasing a print then I would strongly suggest that you really get them professionally printed um, if you don't have the means to do that perhaps you're just testing the waters then definitely stick with the official printer inks because if they are specifically designed to be fade resistant and you're just going to get much less customer complaints um, than you will if you switch the compatibles but for greetings cards then definitely use the squid ink um, I find that they're fantastic and to just give you some kind of idea of cost the official Canon inks will range from anywhere between £50 for a full set if you can get them on special offer right up to almost 100 whereas I've just double checked and for the ink squid compatibles the full sets so that's six inks I think I paid £8 last time and again these will last a couple of months um, and it's just so much cheaper the print quality is fantastic I've never had a problem with them the only thing that you do need to be aware of is if you are making a switch you need to switch all of your ink cartridges at once even if they're not all empty because if you are mixing and matching um, ink cartridges from different suppliers then you'll run into problems so I'll drop the link down below check them out um, I'm not affiliated with them I'm just a very happy customer so that's how I print my greetings cards in-house. I hope that's been helpful for you. Like I said, I've received lots of questions recently asking various things from the ink that I use to the card that I print on and how I make my cards for the size. So I'm hoping that that's answered all of your questions. If you do have any more, pop them in the comments down below. I always read my comments and I always respond. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, definitely hit the like button. I would love it if you could subscribe. My aim for 2022 is to hit 250 subscribers. We're already at 185 and it's still January. So I'm really, really hopeful that we're gonna get there maybe by March. So help me get there early. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.